Grace, mercy. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Hello. Very good morning. Hello, welcome. And um, we've got an exciting guest with us today. We've got Andrew here. He's got lots of goodies in his bag, so it's going to be um, the, the, the usual interactive stuff. Andrew's from, if you didn't know, from um, Quebec's with us. And you're coming to the end of your tenure here, aren't you? Moving on. Where are you moving on to? Nottingham. Nottingham. So, so Andrew's going to speak to us today. And just to say, it's a non communion service this morning. We're trying out a service of prayer and praise. So, slightly different words, but there's some familiar things in there as well for you. And um, also, if you've not seen or heard, we do have some sad news. Charles isn't coming to us, he's not going to be ordained. We did have a party yesterday, and I don't have a curate. Um, he's had a last minute personal um, situation and he's not going to go forward to ordination. It was all very last minute, so please pray for him. It's a huge decision for him to make, but absolutely the right one for him. Just a bit unusual and a bit un, you know, sudden, really. And also, please pray for his family because they've just moved house, you know, reorientated themselves to a new way of life, which has all gone out of the window. So, probably some more news on that as, as we move on. But at the moment, yeah, very sad situation for him, very difficult for him. Um, I didn't get to wear a party dress yesterday, which is also sad, but never mind, we're, we're, we're a crack on just the same. Um, just to say, this week there's um, the Eucharist on Wednesday evening here, um, Holy Communion with me. And um, I'm going to read some bands, we've got some bands of marriage to read. So I published the bands of marriage between Craig Adam MacDonald and Victoria James Smith, um, Craig of Ruffwell and Victoria of this parish. This is for the first time of asking. And if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. So let's pray for them. Heavenly Father, we pray for Craig and Victoria as they prepare for their wedding day. May they know your grace and mercy and love in their lives and for their whole lives together. Amen. So bless them. So, is it anyone's birthday this week? Today, anyone's birthday? No, no birthdays? We won't sing happy birthday then. Um, any other notices? I think we had a great coffee morning yesterday. I only caught bingo at the end. It was super. I didn't buy tickets so I couldn't win. So let's begin with our opening. Praise the Lord, the Almighty. Please stand if you're able.
God who is free, who draws us to you. We give thanks for the free who love. We give thanks for the free who are here. We arise today in a mighty strength. The God who is one, the God who is free. Creating all through love. We arise today in the might of the Father, in the strength of the Son, in the gentleness of the Spirit. Affirming all through love. We say together, one what thing we ask of the Lord, this is what we see, that, that we may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives, to behold all the beauty of the Lord, and, and to see him in his temple. Who is it that we seek? We seek, we seek the Lord our God. Do we seek him with all our heart? Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do we seek him with all our soul? Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do we seek him with all our mind? Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And do we seek him with all our strength? Amen. Amen. Christ, have mercy. Give a time of silence. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. So, Mr. Bell, help us to amend what we are, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. It's obviously me that needs to seek forgiveness. <laughs> Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we've got the glory to say, shall we do it? Try and move around. <coughs> Will give us the, the right notes? Do you want us to play the tune or sing it for you? Do you want to play the tune? Yeah, I think if you give us a note, and our, our, we can, I'll sing the tune. Well, should we do it for once first? Play it. Yes, we do.
so you're going to be one from here backwards. You're going to be two. Okay, this part. You're going to be three, including you, Andrew. Three to here, and we'll be four of that. So I'll start you all off, okay? Gloria. Glory to you, Lord. 
Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Oh, you want me to do this bit as well? <laughs> Please be seated. I'm always very interested when I come to somewhere new as to how they do things. And one of the things that I noticed on the first slide that came up, the one that Bob got right. <laughs> they used to go right. <laughs> was it said, welcome. So how many of you this morning feel welcomed? Yes. Most of you do. <laughs> there were a few hands that didn't go off. But what was it that made you feel welcome? Greeting each other. Yeah. Greeting each other. And how did you greet each other? Now I will say that there is an example given in there within the passage that we heard from Corinthians. Not just any old kiss. A holy kiss. A holy kiss. Now, I have been told that there is a difference between a holy and an unholy kiss, but we last at the end of the sermon this morning. <laughs> Careful, Bob. <well. laughs> but the way that we greet each other means that we made to feel welcomed. When you came in through the door and you see somebody who you haven't seen for a long time and you look at them and you say, Welcome! It's really good to see you again. How many of you have that kind of greeting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or how many of you looked and thought, oh, Crumbs, it's him again? <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes easy to make those who we know feel welcome. We know them, we see them coming in, we see them all the time, and we say, welcome, come in, it's really good to see you. How's the dog doing now? How's the cat doing? How's your twice cousin, three times removed doing? And you know about the person, and you're stood there, and you're conversing with them, and it's all well and good, and you come and you sit down and you feel welcomed. But what about the person who you don't know? Going back quite a few years before I took up my first appointment in Chesterfield, I decided on the Sunday morning I would go and worship in a church that I don't normally worship at, and wasn't part of the churches that I would be responsible for. So I walked into the church and I got the holy nod from the steward on the door, and I went and I sat on the back row, because that's obviously the place where all of those who are new to a church will sit. So I went in, I sat on the back row, and the lady who was sat next to me looked at me and gave me another holy nod. And then she started talking to me. And she started off by saying, you're new here, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. Oh, she said. And then she went on to tell me all of the problems that there were in the circuit. I'm sat there, smiling nicely at her, nodding away, and then her final words were, and we're getting a new minister, and I don't know what they're going to be like. <laughs> at that point, the steward came from the back of the church and came and said, excuse me, 
but I knew the Reverend Andrew Checkley, the new minister. At which point, I just smiled and nodded at her. I didn't dare look at the lady who was sat next to me. But imagine what that felt like as a welcome into the church. That lady didn't know anything at all about me. And yet she was there and she was talking about me, about all of the bad things that were happening in the circuit. And then casting aspersions on my character before she even knows me. Made to feel welcomed? Well, I'm not so sure. So maybe if we look at this passage from Matthew's Gospel, we get an indication as to how we welcome people. And that passage talks about how you make people feel welcome. And what it says is that the best thing to do is even to give somebody a drink of water. Anyone feeling thirsty? An interesting comment there. Don't break into a new packet. But why not? Why shouldn't you receive the same as everybody else? So you've all now got the water that means that you're all welcome. Job done. That's it. I'm out of here. <laughs> but that says passage says, even if you do this the least to one of my little ones, that is just the start. The welcome only starts with giving somebody a drink of water. Because it's there that the conversation starts and it's there that you get to know somebody and you look at them and you say, what do you need? 
If we gave everybody the same thing as they came in through the door, but didn't listen to the needs of the person, then we wouldn't be making them feel welcome. The person who walks through the door and says, excuse me, I might say, oh no, don't worry, we know what you need, here's a glass of water. But I want my marriage fun. I want my child baptised. I've just lost a relative and want a funeral. Well, it's fine, you know, we've given you a glass of water, that's everything you need, you're sorted. That person goes away thinking, well, that wasn't particularly useful. I'll try the Methodist stand there, won't it? Making people feel welcome. Inviting them in. I'm not quite sure how it is that you do baptisms here, but I know in some churches that I go to and do baptisms, one of the first things that the congregation does is they sit at the back and they say, well, yeah, we'll sit at the back so that everyone else can sit at the front. And I said to one of the groups one Sunday, I said, why do you sit at the back? Oh, well, so everyone else can be near the front. I said, but just think of it this way. What happens when people come into the church for the very first time? They don't know which hymn book to use. They don't know when to stand up. They don't know when to sit down. They don't know anything at all. If you are sat in the midst of them, you give them the hymn book and you say, are you all right? Can you find everything? You stand up at the start of the hymns. You sit down at the end of them. We make them feel engaged, involved, and part of the community that they are coming to join with us in. Part of being made to feel welcomed. The other thing about that passage is recognising who it is that you're welcoming. Now I must admit, recognising people can be quite difficult. I always remember my dad, many years ago, got into trouble. He used to go swimming every week, and there was a lady who we saw at the swimming baths. And then he was out with my mum, and they were doing the shopping, and he saw this lady. And my dad's first words of greetings were, Oh, hello, I'm sorry I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. <laughs> You can tell where I get my humour from. <laughs> but recognising the person to whom you are talking. Recognising that the people who walk through the doors are individuals. And it shouldn't actually matter who it is who walks through the doors. Anyone here watch Call the Midwife? Our family are, are watching it. It's set in the um, east end of London and it's um, a group of, of midwives. And there's one occasion when the hospital reception, the, the doctor's receptionist, who is a qualified nurse, her husband is the doctor and he becomes ill. So they have to close. And she says, don't worry, I will sort it out. So she goes out and she goes and she goes up to the first patient and she says, what do you need? Oh no, 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 I want to see somebody else. And then the nurse comes in, in the full uniform. I want to see the nurse, I want to see the nurse. The next day, she's there and she's got her full nurse's uniform on. And people talk to her. The difference it makes when you recognise what it is and who somebody is. When people look at us, I wonder what they see. When I was talking with Bob before the service, Bob's first question to me was, how do you want me to dress? <laughs> I've got a lot of anxiety around what I wear. I did su suggest the purple unicorn costume, <laughs> but apparently that might lead to divorce in Bob's house, so that's maybe not quite the way to go. Next week, Bob. 
next week. There you go, you heard it here. But imagine if the person who was coming to lead the service, if I had just tipped up and I'd been wearing jeans and a t-shirt, would you have looked and thought, what's that person doing at the front? Hang on a minute. They're standing up there and preaching. Good heavens, what, what, what is the world coming to? They haven't got the right clothes on. They're not wearing the right coloured shirt for the occasion. And then you realise who it is. And you recognise them. And maybe your attitude changes. I once went into a school and I was there signing in and I was looking down the list of titles. It was quite a short list as most of these tend to be. Reverend didn't feature on the list so I put a tick next to the one that said other thinking I could change it later. Printed out the label and there's my picture with other Andrew Chetley. <laughs> Note for a school if you <laughs> have a check later. But it does make a difference. And people do treat you differently depending on who you are. When talking with people in these custom services departments or talking with a family about a baptism, one of the first questions that I ask is, what, what do we call you? I say, Andrew? Oh, is the response sometimes. Knowing who you are talking with and not treating them any differently. But the people who walk through the doors are the face of Christ. They are the people within this community who are in need, who are there to celebrate with. And it's interesting that when you come to the bit that says, are there any birthdays this week? Oh, there's nobody, so we can't sing happy birthday. <coughs> well, of course you can, because there are bound to be people in the village that have a birthday today. So maybe sometimes we welcome those who we don't know, even if they are not present. So maybe every week we should sing happy birthday and remember those who are not here. Recognising the need. Being welcoming. And one of the best ways to be welcoming is just to be yourself. Because all of us don't have the same gifts and graces as everybody else. I would make the world's worst person to stand on the door and welcome people. Because I don't actually like people. <laughs> I kid you not. I am incredibly bad at making small talk. I'm incredibly bad and engaging in conversations. You do not want me on the door welcoming people. I'd much prefer to be behind the scenes somewhere else doing something in the background. But some of you are like that. Some people are really good at engaging, at spotting, at looking and saying, welcome. And the best thing to do is to have a smile on your face, to look somebody in the eye. It was interesting when we were talking about where we were going to preach from, I said, do you use the pulpit or the lectern? And when we were talking about the lectern, it was sort of, this is too high. We bring ourselves to the level of the people to whom we are talking. When I am doing a baptism service and there is the child, usually sort of maybe a two, three year old, who's down there somewhere. You know that bit where it says, for you Christ came into the world? Let me show you where I am when I'm doing that. I'm there. I'm looking at the child. I'm 
talking to the child. Because at that moment in time, they are the most important person in the world. And whoever walks through the doors, at the moment that they walk through those doors, they should be the most important person around. And it's easy to get caught up in doing other things, making sure the rotor for coffee is done, making sure the electrics are, making sure the front of the church is all hoovered and made looking nice. All of those are important. But imagine what it's like if you walk through the door and you just have a, I'll be with you in a second. Think of how we welcome. Think of how we engage with the people who walk through the doors and within our communities. Think of how that person we are welcoming is actually Christ. For whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Amen. You want me to do anything else with that bottle that much? No, what I'd really love to do, other than say thank you for that, is to pray for you because this is Andrew, you're coming to the end of your time um, here in Kipaxon. You've been a great, not, not just a great colleague, but a great friend to me um, as, as I arrive. And is it okay if we pray for you as this is your last time you're, you're here? Um, I'll, I'll grab the, the microphone. Um, Let's pray for Andrew. It's been great to hear your words this morning about welcome. And um, we're going we're gonna to pray for you now. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for Andrew's ministry uh, here and in Kipax and amongst the other villages that he cares for. And for his time and his family and the witness that he's made in these places and the difference he's made. We especially thank you for his ministry to those who are bereaved and um, for all the work that he's done and the blessings that he's brought to this place. And we just pray for him now. Heavenly Father, fill him with your Holy Spirit. May he know your presence in this move. Um, equip him for his new role um, down in Nottingham. And may he not be a stranger to us when we keep in touch and encourage one another in our ministry and in our life together. And bless him and his family on their move, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Andrew. Um, I don't know how you preach about notes, it's amazing. <coughs> so much to learn. There we go, it's always good. It's called the Holy Spirit. It's called the Holy Spirit. Oh, yes. <laughs> it's never discipline that we get it. <laughs> Let's stand if we're able to and say the creed together. We enter into the mysteries of God in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he arose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, our offer treat you as brother, sister, let me say.
to be used in your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for our intercessions. Father God, we are grateful that we are all here in your presence this morning. We value this time to talk to you, knowing that you will always listen and hear our prayers. We know that you never withhold your love from us. We pray for our world, beautiful but in many places broken through warfare and unkindness. We pray for peace in those places where war and poverty are there every day for people to live through and endure. We hope that all those who try to find peace and solutions do so with understanding, kindness, compassion and fairness. In our lives, help us never to lose our sense of wonder in the beauty of nature all around us and to be custodians of it the future generations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the church and all who lead in it, whoever and wherever they may be, either in the grandest of cathedrals or the smallest of buildings. Help those who lead us show us that by walking in the footsteps of God this week, our faith will be strengthened, awakened, and renewed. We value our lovely church here and the way in which we do things. It has evolved through our love of you and the practicalities of worship. Help us to continue to thrive here and always welcome everyone who comes through our doors. Bless Bob and Gordon and their families as they help and support our faith, but grant them time for their own worship. And we give thanks for Andrew's teaching this morning. Lord, hear us. Lord, Father, we pray for all who are experiencing difficulty in any way. Those who are ill, those who are anxious, those who are lonely, those who live on the streets, and those who nobody misses. We pray for all who are struggling financially at the moment and who don't know which way to turn. We give thanks for all those who help run food banks and assist families in their difficulties, for their dedication and for people's generosity. Father, let all those who are ill in whatever way feel your loving presence around them. Help them to find a a way in seeing a light at the end of their personal tunnels. We pray for all those who are homeless, living on the streets, or seeking asylum. Help us to see that they are human too, and not ignore their plight. Help us to be generous where we can, both with our time and our money. In our church home, we've been asked to pray for Mr. and Mrs. J. Byrne and Colin Roberts, who are unwell at the moment. Lord, hear us. We pray for all students and young people undertaking exams and looking forward to future opportunities. We pray for all children getting ready to move on, whether it be to university, high school, or a new class. Help them to do so with anticipation and excitement and look forward to and relish all the new opportunities open to them. Keep them all safe, Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all who are bereaved and sad this week. The families of the submarine lost on its way to see the Titanic, the young people in Nottingham, and all of us sadly lost their lives because of warfare or starvation. We remember all those who we have loved and who have had such an influence on our lives, but who are no longer with us. And locally, we think of Kath Hepworth, 
Colin Roberts, uh, sorry, Kath Edward, Carol Fletcher, and Vic Carter. Welcome them into your heavenly kingdom, and let their families and friends who are left behind, mourning and missing them, feel your loving presence around them. Lord, hear us. Lord, have mercy. This summer and in the weeks to come, we pray for sunny, special times with those we love and care about. Let us spread our love and joy, bringing happiness to those we meet. Make yourself known to us in new and exciting ways. Empower and inspire us and help us to make a difference as we leave here this morning. Heavenly Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior. Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's continue our prayers with the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done.
So we need lots more things to happen first. Well, just before we come to our time of reflection, just just to say that this evening um, we have a, a healing service here. I don't know when we last had one here, but it will be a, a, a simple communion service with a time of laying on of hands and anointing with oil if people wish. I'll be playing guitar, uh, and it will be very peaceful and beautiful service with me and Gordon this evening. So if you're free to come along, whether you feel like you need healing or not, you don't have to be in a crisis to come and enjoy God's presence with some very quiet uh, and, and, and reflective. So that's this evening at 7. And we're having a little taste of a time of reflection and quiet with this, this part of the service. So we have some liturgy and then we're going to have a slightly extended time of silence as we just think about our own needs and the needs of those around us and have a time with God. We're going to prepare for that with these, these words. In you loving God, the widowed find the grave, the orphaned find the purge, and the fearful find the friend. In you, loving God, the wounded find the healed, the penitent find the open, the burden find the counsel. In you, loving God, the miserly find a beggar, the despondent find love to the breaker, the needless find the rule breaker. In you, Jesus Christ, we meet our maker. And if some need to say, help me, and if some need to say, save me, and if some need to say, hold me, and if some need to say, forgive me, then let these be set now in confidence of Christ. in whose heart is both welcome and warning, this day say to us, do to us, and reveal in us the things that will make us whole. And we will wait, and we will praise you. Amen. So let's remain seated for this hymn, our final hymn, finally, as the dear pants for the water.
Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled or afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you at home. Peace be with you. I'm going to go around everybody. Peace be with you. If I miss you out. Peace be with
singing a blessing now. I know this is new. We've had a few new things today. So we're going to have a rehearsal. So there's some music. If you read music, if you don't read music, just follow the dots going up and down, roughly. Okay. Should we give it a go, Chris? Yeah. You ready for it? I'm not sure. We'll be fine. We'll give it a go.